This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we're doing a uh, fresh meat case here that's not doing so well. And this is gonna be some of the older equipment that uh, I get to work on. So we've got this down here on bottom. This is the compressor for the fresh meat area. The unit's not running and it's warm. The oil's kind of low, like it's been cycling off the pressure switch. We're gonna do a leak search on it. What this does is the refrigerant lines go down and across over here. The condenser goes up to this up on top. So I've been here before, but it's been a while. Let's go over here. So the refrigerant line for the liquid and suction come across this wall. They come over here and go right along the bottom of the cases. And then from the bottom of the cases, Thank it goes you. over these cases over here. So this is the one that's starved. Um, you can tell it's not getting much refrigerant left. So it's going to the main ones, the easiest flow. And you can tell these cases are in really bad shape. We just got to look for the big leaks and uh, get it back up and going. It uh, takes care of this case here and this one down here. And uh, like I said, it goes right across there and comes back over to here. This is just, like I said, a little mom and pop store. You know, they don't have humongous budgets for all brand new equipment and stuff like that. Unfortunately, you know, they just do small sections at a time and this thing is uh, leaking somewhere. So we're gonna start looking for leaks, see what we can find. Okay, we got everything zeroed out here on our scale from Testo. If you like any Testo stuff, you can always pick up from True Tech Tools. So there's where we're at. We'll go ahead and get started. Of course, you can get this thing running again. Nope. The way this thing's controlled by temperature is by the low pressure switch here. And basically, I made a mistake by starting off looking for the leak because we was in defrost. And if I would have known we was in defrost, I wouldn't have added any refrigerant. Now I don't know if it was actually low or if it's just this pressure switch that's out of whack or do we have a TXV that's not feeding the one case. We only have one case that's warm. The other ones are okay, supposedly. Now granted, there's no thermometers in there or anything like that because you can see the condition of them. What I want to do is I'm going to valve off the liquid line. We're going to see if that sight glass goes empty or stays clear looking. That way I know whether or not I'm really low or not because at this point right now I'm not sure if we're even low if we even need to be looking for a leak. I need to be able to determine whether or not that is an issue with the TXV or if it's low on charge. And it's just really hard to tell when you can't get to your high side ports to worth a crap to get under to them. It just like I said, this is some of the great working environments. So the way these old fashioned pressure control type systems work is your temperature is equivalent to pressure. And your pressure starts to come up, it's equivalent to the temperature that's inside the box. So as long as, I'm all, as, long as all the evaporators have the same pressure, theoretically, they're right now right around 25 degrees. So we probably kick this in around 38 degrees, somewhere in that ballpark, that way it has time to melt, and then kick out at whatever below that. Uh, usually you find out what's the lowest the machine can do, and let it go down cold. And then as long as it always kicks on at like say 38, 39 degrees, then it usually gives a natural def defrost. So you don't need a defrost clock generally with one of these systems. However, they've added one to it as an extra precaution. So right now, we're waiting for this thing to kick back on. Uh, like I said, I think that one TXV may not be feeding correctly. And if that's the case, then we'd have to uh, get another TXV. I just went through the history. It looks like we've had a TXV head that was acting up not long ago. Went ahead and lowered the cutout pressure and I'm waiting for this thing to clear up here on the flash wires. Just flashed off the beam. So what we're gonna do now, down to eight PSI. Let's go ahead and open it back up see if that thing goes solid. Unfortunately, the valve in that, so far apart, it's hard to even see what's going on. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, there it goes. No, we're not completely empty. We have not made up so 
some more, so we know that we've got enough refrigerant to start filling it. So if we don't see anything, then it must be open or it must be full. So looks of it, we'll give it a second here because there's no evaporator beans or anything like that. Let those evaporators all fill up. Refrigerant. It should back it up and make that go solid in a second. Uh, we could have a fan control up on the roof that's not working right. That's a, another disaster. So we'll let this run for a little bit. Yeah, it's not even cold. Okay, we're gonna let this thing pump down and then we're gonna go take it apart. See if we can yank the guts out of it, clean the uh, pin, see if the pins move freely, re-lubricate them, whatever we've got to do, and we'll see if we can uh, get it going. All right, so what we're doing here is we're jumping that turret out, which is a spatial jumper with heavy gauge wire. We're trying to get it down so it'll hold down there, so I'm losing as little as possible. We're going to keep it a positive, that way, you know, a little bit of a trickle while we're doing the check on the TXV, that way we don't have to pull back and all that stuff on it. Otherwise, that turns into a mess, too, because half the time you don't have valves where you need them at to pull a vacuum on it. All right, so they did not replace this particular one. It was the other one on the other side. All right, so we got that out. Looking at it, it's not looking great, but we'll go ahead and clean it up real quick, and then I'll go ahead and yank the rest of the guts out of it. Okay, we got her cleaned up there a little bit, especially the end there. Just use some non chlorinated brake cleaner. I am trying. I'm trying out the iPhone here instead of using the GoPro, which you can tell it's a cleaner picture, but still. We're going to get that in there and we're going to take the guts out of here. I don't have anything to hold the phone to do it, and this is about the worst freaking location possible. So that's what we're doing. Okay, we're going to take this apart next, which we're going to get some oil all over all right we're gonna run that down a little bit more because that pressure's built back up again if that thing is fouled off like it is you're trapping it from the liquid line through so it has to pull through the other units probably got to run her into a little bit of a negative to get it to stay down to at least you know one or two psi i'm not going to get gassed out underneath there like i was starting to so uh, game you gotta play with these old beasts. So here we are in the negative two. Shut it off. What's it gonna do? It should come right back up again. If not, we'll put a little refrigerant in there, but see it's still still got some bleeding through. May actually hold this time. Yep, there it goes back up again. It's boiling off. That's why sometimes They'll go into a negative on a pump down just to get as much out as possible, and that's not right because it will continue to run if the unit is out of refrigerant. But at the same time, you don't want it short cycling either and damaging the compressor or pumping the oil out. So, on this one here, we're just about there. If it would just stay around that poor mark, we'd be good, but unfortunately, I don't believe it's going to. And that jumper down there that's made from my old test leads so it's about eh, 16 gauge something like that i think all right let's see how that does all right so it's staying right here at zero we're up by just a touch in the compressor to bring it up out of a negative there we go that should be good I just do not want it pulling air in. One or two pounds of pressure, no big deal. But I'm trying to get it apart, clean it, put it back together as quick as possible. That boil, that refrigerant's gonna boil off. There's that part which usually doesn't have any problems. The part that does is that needle. You have to get the needle nose pliers out and pull it out. Yeah, this is great. That's why I carry my Leatherman everywhere. So we should be able to get up. 
and there. Yep, needle's not pulling out all the way, no problems. See? There we go. See that gunk on the end of the needle? I clean that up and we should be okay, hopefully. Okay, it looks a little bit better. Let's put it back in there and see if it goes in and out easily. And if it does, great. If not, then we need to order the valve. All right, it goes up and down freely. No problems at all. Very nice and free. That's why I said these dang TV, TXVs do not really have a lot to go wrong. They usually just get gummed up or the heads go bad, but let's put them back together. Not a lot to go wrong with a spring. Spring can get weak, that's about it. Let's put her back together. So we got the valve opened up there. If we need to adjust it, we can. Let's go ahead and kick it on. This right here is basically a heat exchanger. DC heat and just run hot liquid or subcooled liquid through the uh, suction line. And just separates it goes back to there. All right, let's go ahead and open that back up. have to readjust that pressure switch again too because so we did not think with that which sucks because that means our temperature is going to be out of whack so we may have to adjust it a little bit all we do is change the cutout to allow it to run longer or not as long and remove those let's go ahead and uh, kick it on and see what we get It's coming up ever so slowly. All right, so it just kicked on. See where it's like glass is at. Yep. I should go up here in a second. If the uh, coil is starting to get cold. All right, so it's not, it's not really getting cold. That head might be junk. Very easily could be. You can see it's in pretty rough shape. Try adjusting it. Alright, so we've got the valve information there. I backed it out. It took eight turns as far as the wrench could go back and forth. And I still don't feel any real cold coming out. So I'm thinking that head has lost its charge, which is not fighting the spring and the springs went in, which then cuts off the flow. I'm just gonna order a whole new one. I think that's about as much as we can do for today. So we got that marked, that top marked for colder. Uh, kinda got it back close as we can get it. Checking temperature right now with my Testo probes. We're not quite this one here. We were right there about 39 area. The other one a little bit lower. Less low. Yeah, right there. So well, I took it just a touch lower and it uh, seems like it's doing good now. I got the valve ordered. The head on it right now actually is a medium temp head or a low temp head. How it worked, I don't know, but we're going to get the right valve for it to balance port, flare, and flare. And uh, everything's back to normal and everything's sealed up. We'll check it once it's running before I decide whether I'm charging for the refrigerant because that may not have been needed. That was my fault for getting in a hurry. All right, so we came back with the TXV, which TXV we ended up needing. It was a balanced port, and uh, we got that there. Just pumped her down same way I did before. It's uh, there around 18 psi area on the suction. And we just released it. So far we have a little bit of bubbles there. It still needs to stabilize. It wasn't that bad prior to even now. You figure we're... But you figure now we are using uh, more refrigerant because we have that coil to fill up. So let's go take a look at that real quick, see if it's feeding. haven't tucked up the bulb or anything like that just yet but we'll do that here just a little bit there's the one checking 
just about guarantee you that that bolt is dead. Oh yeah, we got plenty of cold. You can feel the cold right across that. Suction coming back cold too. So let's go up on top and I'll show you what we got up here. Nothing. Nothing at all. Totally dead. So we got it all mounted up there, put on this side instead of this side. Well, it just kind of goes down through there, and you can see it's feeding quite a bit. Um, there's no suction port, so all we can do is check temperature and see what it is compared to the back. Uh, so we can just do it old-fashioned way. Uh, I don't know if my probe will reach FR or not. Sometimes it has problems with all this metal and stuff. place there. Don't look too bad once you get all the coverings on it and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, start dropping the temp some more. Once we get down, you know, around 40, we'll check this superheat and see where we're at. Got to check our sight glass yet, see if it's full or empty or what's going on, and uh, kind of go from there. Go ahead and get our clamp on there and check our superheat, see what we get. Right now, we're at about 51, so we're getting there. You can see where they clamped on this once before here with tape so that we can go right right there. Yeah, horizontal is the best way, but vertical will work too. Oh, we're just going to do it with my phone. Okay, what we did is we went ahead and just left the suction on, just opened up suction and discharge. Put the probe right there on the discharge so I can measure it on the phone at the same time. Right now we have 20 degrees subcooling. All right, I'm about 20. Uh, no, maybe about two quarter turns here and see how it does. Let it set for a while. All right, so when was here last time I jumped the gun and started wanting to add refrigerant, which here's the reason why it's low. So now that that TXV is opened up. see we're a little bit low there so we're adding right now I'm gonna get that going because I can get the super heat below 18 degrees and it's probably because we're not getting full liquid to the TXP so as soon as we get that we'll be able to tell as soon as we get that we'll be able to tell whether or not we got an issue with TXP yet which I'm pretty sure we don't I think it's just a matter we're getting starved so it should be good good hopefully here in a little bit and then we're gonna look for a leak which who knows where it's at in this place. Okay, now I'm leaking on my flare joints. I did insulate that right there. And we're going to check up on the roof and then we're going to practice come back. Okay, this is the condenser. You got some, you got multiple different circuits on this condenser. And they come up through here. You can see the ones that are valved off or clamped off. This thing's an abortion. You got two different bands, two different blades. You can see that one's going one direction, one's going the other. They're right, but you got a fan switch here that shuts it down when the ambient gets uh, cold enough. And then it'll just run off one fan. And then it has Headmaster on top of that. So that's. That's what we got going on here. I'm gonna scan this over. Right now we're about two pounds into this jug and we had nine before that and then two the day before. So right now you're at about 13 pounds. But these have some pretty good sized receivers underneath here. And this one here is no exception. It, uh, that's the problem back in the day that refrigerant was a couple bucks a pound. It wasn't a big deal. It was R12 back then even. so. They are just hungry, hungry hippos. And I'm not picking up any leaks. I mean, I had a little something up towards the front, but that could have been a false alarm, I'm not sure. And you can see the refrigerant flow is kind of slow, but I don't feel anything on my dryer like it's restricted. Which we can check temperature on that and stuff, which those are all things I need to do at a later date. Right now, we're already almost five o'clock, and 
yeah. I'm just gonna need to come back, spend some time on it. I can't come back tomorrow, so it ought to be on uh, Monday. Gonna continue scanning around. I've scanned back in between behind all these areas back in here, which this is where it kind of makes it nice that you know you can kind of get your wand back here. And if you're a 13 pound leak, this thing should be like going off like, I mean, come on, let's be real about this. So, yeah. Hey, this is the struggle that we deal with when you have these old systems and you're trying to find a leak and it's like okay you don't know did somebody has somebody been adding to it did somebody not get it completely charged back up when they made a repair because it was summertime and now it's cold out you know the winter charge is a little different you know it's all one of them things i know when i did this one right here this one took a total of 25 pounds when i did it and i wrote it down so you would know and that's even a smaller compressor than what we've got over there. All right, so I just check my temperature down here, my temperature back there. It's less than one degree differential, if even that much. I think we're about as good as we're gonna get. We're right at about, all right, so we got this board up. I keep getting a small hit right there on those lines but not every time. <laughs> and I shut the system off, hoping that the pressure would come up a little bit, which it did a little bit, but I've scanned all across here. I mean, we're talking 26 pound leak, so if it truly leaked that fast and it wasn't leaking for a long, long time, that's the thing we're fighting against here. And now it's not doing it. It may have just been because the suction line was cold and the temperature difference. You would have figured you would have got something. All right, guys, so we're going to go back on Monday. I'm going to recover the system. I'm going to put some trace gas in there, and then I'm going to pump it up with uh, nitrogen, see if we can find the leak. I have a feeling it's probably in the suction line somewhere. I'm not sure otherwise. It could be up on the roof, the way the wind was blowing and stuff. Wasn't going to find it that day, and like I said, it's gotten late, so... That's going to wrap this video up. Appreciate you guys checking it out. Make sure you smack the thumbs button on the way out. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.